Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. By now, you're probably familiar with Seth Worley's awesome tutorials on cool stuff like shooting people with laser guns and blowing stuff up. In this episode of Red Giant TV, we thought we'd try something entirely new, shooting someone and blowing them up. In one of my favorite effects from our short film plot device directed by Seth, he did just that. And in this tutorial, we've asked Seth to show us a possible workflow for doing that. In a tutorial that Seth calls, Senor Explosor Grande. What? It, uh, oh, apparently, I'm being told that we've, uh, we've changed the name to um, The Exploding Man. Yeah, that's, that's original. Are you an alien? No. I'll take that as a maybe. Whoa. All right, so first we start, I shot uh, three different elements. One was me with a gun, me without a gun, and me looking like an idiot throwing my jacket in the middle of the air. So basically, then you take all these and drop them into After Effects. I've got my three layers here. Uh, boom 1, which is me with a gun, Boom 2, me without a gun, and Boom 3, it's me looking like an idiot with my jacket. So I'm actually take that because we, that's going to start when I blow up the jacket shot. So we're going to move that to where it lines up more on the end of the comp. And then I'm actually going to drag Boom 2 up to the top, which is me without a gun. I'm going to have that be the, so the one at the top. And you see this, we're going to start with this little shadow here. You see the shadow that I'm projecting? We're going to duplicate that. I'm going to double click on it, select our mask tool, and I'm going to cut around the shadow. Because we're going to start uh, messing with the me individually, so we want my shadow to be separate. So let me feather that up, and that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to cut me out using the rotor brush. So we're going to double click on the layer uh, that is currently me that will explode. Go up and select the rotor brush, and then we're going to uh, roto me out using the rotor brush. Uh, and so we'll take that basically frame by frame, and then when it's done, we hit freeze. And that freezes our roto brush, and now I am rotoscoped completely. I am completely alone and about to blow up. And so now we'll add a light wrap to that rotoed shot. Well, our background layer will select to be boom one, which is one with me with a gun. So then you see the light wrap around me. Now we're going to add the CC scatter eyes to the rotoscoped me, and we're going to um, keyframe the scatter starting right when I get shot. Uh, go over a few frames and then turn the scatter way up. So, and then we're going to uh, have the opacity sync with that. So, as the scatter eyes goes out, the opacity will be going down and fading me out. And there you go. Now, we're going to bring in particular. So, we're going to create a new uh, solid. Call it particular one because we're going to do three different layers of particular. We're going to uh, apply particular to that solid. And here we have particular right out of the box. So, uh, we're going to open up the emitter. We're going to start messing with this. Uh, velocity for motion, we want to be from 100, and we'll come back to that. We will add our position to be right where I am. Uh, we're going to actually go to the beginning of the frame and keyframe our particles. Uh, and so they start at a certain amount, pretty high amount, turn that way up, and then go one frame over and immediately set our particles to zero. So it's a short burst of particles. Go to our physics. We're going to change our physics model to bounce. And our gravity, we're going to set that to about 100. So now you see it bursts and the gravity is applied. We're going to have our uh, emitter type be a sphere, and we'll make it uh, a lot taller with the emitter size Y. We'll move it down to where it's positioned perfectly where I am. And so then we're going to actually move put the layer over a little bit so it starts right where uh, I blow up. So now we're going to mess with the velocity and uh, some other stuff. We're going to have uh, the direction be outwards. Um, and now we're going to create a new solid. We're going to call this floor, and we're going to make it 3D. And then we're going to take the X rotation and apply and make it 90. And we're going to move it down. This is going to be our floor for our particles. We're going to align this with the ground. So messing with the X rotation and the positioning, we're going to align it with the ground. And then what we're going to do, we're going to make it invisible. And we're going to go back to particular and we're going to go to bounce in our physics and we're going to set our floor layer to floor 
And now you can see the particles bounce right off of it. So then we're going to uh, select the collision event to be stick. So then they blow up and they stick when they hit the floor. Uh, or we're going to turn our direction spread all the way up to 100 so that it's going outward as well, like toward us and away from us on the z-axis. Um, and then we're going to, because of the motion from velocity, we're going to want, we're going to actually uh, take frame by frame, keyframe our particle position, our, our emitter position. So it goes back and forth real quick for the first few frames. So it's you know, flinging the particles back and forth. Then we want to open up our particle uh, element in particular and start messing with that. So we'll start with the size. Uh, turn that way down to 1. Our size random all the way up to 100 and then our particle type to cloudlet. And that looks pretty cool. Then we're going to want to mess with the color. Maybe turn the size up to 2. That looks good. Then we want to mess with the color. We're going to actually set it to random from gradient and then we'll open color from life select this gradient here and then we're going to change the color each of the two colors in this two color gradient uh, something kind of like a very very faded dark dark orange like a you know like cardboard almost and then a little bit of lighter and then you can mess with this a lot uh, and then we're going to mess around with the keyframes for our positioning with our particle flinging just to make sure that you know it's got not going too far back too far forward our gravity maybe we want to turn it all the way up turn it up really high to 380 maybe and the physics time factor to 1.5 so that it happens quicker there's a quicker burst and it falls quicker so there's some weight so particular uh we're gonna duplicate it and duplicate a particular layer and rename that particular two and then you just want to go into the layer here and just change stuff around just a little bit it's the same particle emitter but with slightly different details a little little you know different in timing of fling size is a little bit different now what we're doing here with randomization uh, gives us a different more varied result than just using random seed uh, which also creates randomization uh, by altering the sizing and other properties and stuff uh, it creates a wider range of variability then we'll duplicate that particle layer and then we'll change the coloring immediately change the coloring of this particle a third particle layer to um, blue and dark blue in the gradient and this is going to be our blue alien blood this third layer so I want to up the size a little bit and our physics time factor back to one so it has a little bit of uh, liquid it moves uh, in more of a liquidy weight uh, throughout the air then we want to go down here and uh, then we're going to go down here and mess around a little bit with the timing of the motion from velocity fling that we're flinging that we're doing. I'm gonna keep saying flinging. It feels really stupid, and so that means it's probably good. So I'm moving the emitter around, uh, and then we're gonna add CC vector blur. This is gonna make it look liquidy. Apply that to a particular three, and then we're gonna go in and just kind of uh, mess with it. Turn our amount up, and then we see that, and it looks pretty good. But we want to change our size to a little bit bigger so we can see it better. And then property we're gonna change to alpha. Then we want to mess with our colors, probably make it a little bit darker. And you want to keep it a fairly, you know, less saturated than you'd expect. Uh, then you're going to grab Particular 3 and move it between Particular 2 and Particular 1. So it's mixed up in the midst of all the uh, other stuff that's blowing up. Step 5, we're going to um, mess with these shadows here. First off, when I blow up, this shadow needs to disappear as well. So we're going to keyframe the opacity on this shadow to where it disappears the, uh, the minute I blow up. And then we're going to need to replace that shadow with the shadow of the particles. So we're going to select all of our layers that are attributed to our, to our particles, including our floor layers. Shift-Command-C precomposes it. And then we're going to uh, make sure it still works. And then we're going to apply to that pre-composition. We're going to apply uh, from Red Giant Warp. We're going to apply RG Shadow. And uh, once we do that, we'll go up, uh, have it lit backlit. And then we're going to position the coordinates uh, to where it's projecting the shadow uh, in the same angle and at about the same width, about the same angle from the same distance as the uh, as my shadow originally was. Turn the opacity and the shadow look down to its 30s or 40s, and then now it will show up just as my shadow disappearing, and that helps sell the lie. Uh, step six: tender love and flare. We're going to uh, create a new adjustment layer. Uh, and we're going to call it a flare explosion, which was um, my band that is still existent. Uh, we're going to apply no light factory. We're going to apply light factory easy because we're easy today. 
We'll move our coordinate down here to me blowing up and we're going to our flare type. We're going to set it to quick take 200. So that looks pretty cool. And then we're going to be keyframing. Again, you want to keyframe the brightness and the scale, uh, going a few frames and changing the amount. And then you have a good explosion. So that's pretty good. Next flare we need to happen. Uh, we're going to have uh, apply another adjustment layer. Call this flare gun. The less successful band that I had. Uh, light factory easy we apply and we're gonna set the coordinates we're gonna start it at my gun and of course using keyframes we're gonna shoot it out of the gun and shoot it at me and uh, then mess with the coordinates for brightness and scale so that it you know bursts when it leaves the gun and then fades out once it hits me so now what we want to do is we want to add a little bit of light shining flashing on me when my uh, when the gun bursts so we're gonna double click the layer of me holding the gun and we're going to select our paintbrush tool. Go down here, make sure the duration is set to single frame. Make sure the mode is set to add. And then our opacity is like, you know, 20%. Uh, and then we can also make sure the uh, hardness is set to zero. And we're going to just paint on my face and my arm and my chest and my legs. And to it's only going to exist for one frame, but it's going to look, you know, like when my gun flashes, like light flashes on me. And we want a second one for when the other me blows up. So we'll go to that frame, we'll draw on me, and then maybe the frame right afterward too. So, uh, you know, you blink, you miss it, but it still helps sell the image. Now we're going to add a, a slight ripple effect. We're going to add a new adjustment layer. We're going to call it Ripple. We're going to go up here to uh, Distort. Find Ripple and drop that. Uh, on and then we're going to uh, set the center of ripple to right where the right at the point of the gun. And if you see, we turn the radius up. You see what that's going to be doing. Uh, the the well, larger the width, the better this looks. The more powerful it's you know the whole thing's going to look. So we we'll turn our width up, and then we're going to keyframe the radius to where uh, the radius is set at zero at the beginning when it first fires off. And then, you know, uh, uh, turn that up as it goes a few frames. And that looks uh, pretty cool. All right, uh, step eight. We're going to add uh, some shakes. So we're going to pre-compose everything into its own comp. We're going to add CC Repetile and expand right, left, down, and up all the way and set our tiling to unfold. Oh, and by all the way, I mean we're going to just turn it up to, you know, and it's... 300s, 200s or something. And that allows us to shake the image and not, uh, you know, see black when we, where it'll have some overlap. We're going to apply wiggle position and then we're going to keyframe the speed and amount starting at when, uh, right before I blow up, it'll be at zero. And then we go a few frames over and turn the wiggle amount back up to about 50. Then we will, uh, have the speed keyframed as well. We want to basically make it look like the explosion uh, knocked the camera um, a little bit, and, you know, and the earth. So once we get those keyframes looking to where we like them, uh, you know, have it fade back out by the end of the shot. So that looks pretty good. And then the next step is to uh, realize you forgot a pretty fundamental element of the entire thing and feel subsequently bad about yourself and your abilities. Uh, I totally forgot one of my favorite things about the shot, uh, which was this the jacket. I shot, you know, myself in the parking lot throwing my jacket about as if no one were watching, which three random dudes were watching. Uh, so we take that layer, we're going to actually cut around my jacket so we cut me out, mask, a uh, feather that mask, and then we're going to um, keyframe the mask path so that, you know, we keep the jacket in shot. We'll move that up right below our shadow layer, and now you look, that looks pretty cool. Uh, one thing, though, that bothers me is this. You can tell there's a difference in the brightness. The sun was going down when I shot this. So we'll take brightness and contrast and drop that on and brighten it up just a little bit to where it doesn't look really, really bad. And, uh, mm, still bad. Okay. So now it looks awesome. So then we'll reapply our shake, and now we're going to apply looks and mojo. Why looks and mojo? Because looks allows us to customize the vignetting, which we want to vignette on this shot. But the overall color gray we want to be done by, by uh, mojo. So we create a separate adjustment layer for looks and for mojo. We apply looks, we go into looks, uh, and we apply a vignette from over here on the right in our tools. We expand it out from the width, uh, tighten it up. Make it even wider, and then bigger, 
And then, you know, we'll click OK. And then we'll go down and create a new adjustment layer and call it Mojo. Since we did that, we'll apply Mojo. And then we'll go in here and we'll turn the action in the in the levels. We'll turn Mojo up just a little bit, and we'll mess with our tint and our balance until uh, we get it looking appropriately enough. And there is our shot. Looks pretty awesome. So then step eleven is really important. We're going to actually affect the surrounding shots because the surrounding shots significantly Whoa. help sell the shot. So in this first shot with me with the gun, we'll apply an adjustment layer and call it flares or flare, and we're going to uh, apply Light Factory to it. No Light Factory, that is. And then, uh, here just to show you the difference in easy and regular Light Factory, I'm going to show you that we can apply the Guru presets in Light Factory. Uh, uh, I'm going to actually first keyframe the light source location frame by frame, so then it's uh, following with the gun. And then once we do that, I'll go up here and click Options, and I'll click Load, and I'll go to my Guru presets, which are located here. And I like Harry Frank's Guru presets for Light, for, uh, light Factory. They're pretty awesome. Uh, this one looks good. So I'm going to keyframe the brightness and scale now that it's moving with the gun, and that looks pretty cool. This, the shot afterward, um, we're going to apply, uh, uh, create a new solid, call it particular, because we're going to put particular onto it, and then we're going to create the ashes that are floating about at the tail end. And I started with this preset that I created called Volcaniac, which you can get at redgiantpeople.com. Uh, search for my name, and you'll find or Volcaniac, and you'll find that. And it comes with these cool little embers that are floating about in there, which I used on Adventure Now 3, which you can see at sethworley.com if you want. Um, so once we do that, we're going to create a new camera. Make sure it's 35 millimeter and the depth of field is enabled so we can get our depth of field. Um, I just like working with the camera most of the time when I'm working with particular, at least a lot I like to. Um, Bring this in, we're going to mess with the Volcaniac preset. We're going to make our emitter size significantly shallower. We're going to bring it as close to the camera as possible so there's just very few particles happening to get into the frame. So that also means we'll have to turn down the amount of particles per second. Now these are still orange, of course, so we're going to have to change the color to closer to what we were working with before. And uh, then we're going to pre-compose everything once we got that looking good so we can add a shake to it using our same process we did before with the CC Repetile in the wiggle position and then keyframing that to where the shake has already started at the beginning of the shot and then fades out by the end. And uh, looks pretty good. And so we apply lo looks and mojo and there's the shot. Whoa. Thanks Seth. That was awesome and well, I, I think Ben said it best. That's really gross. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to learn more about Seth and his work, check out his site at sethworley.com. There's great stuff there, including his web series, Adventure Now, and The Time Closet. Don't forget, you can always download a free trial of any of the Red Giant products that Seth used in this video at redgiantsoftware.com. And you can get tons of free presets for Red Giant plugins on redgiantpeople.com. In fact, Seth has been putting up a bunch of presets that he's created through his work as a director and as both a visual effects and motion graphics artist. Speaking of free, check out Colorista Free and LUT Buddy, two free color correction plugins that we're giving away for, that's right, free. You can find those at redgiantsoftware.com. Finally, I want to mention that if you're looking to keep up with what we're doing at Red Giant, whether it's a tutorial, a contest, a product release, or whatever, just follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and on our blog. Once again, I'm Arlen Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.